<laughs> what is going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen, and this is another Tackle Tuesday. And what Tackle Tuesday is, is, is a video where I sit down and I have a uh, five to six, I don't know, as many baits as I feel like I want to show. And I'm going to show you a bunch of baits that have to do with a specific topic. And the topic of this week's is pre-spawn soft plastic baits. So let's jump into it. All right, so pre-spawn soft plastics. Um, and last week I talked about pre-spawn baits and it, it sparked the idea of what type of soft plastics do I use during the pre-spawn. I use a lot of crank baits, a lot of uh, chatter baits. And if you saw last week's video, or if you haven't seen last week's video, go and watch it. But I, I use a lot of soft plastics as well and mostly on a Texas rig or some type of a jig head. So we're gonna start with uh, what I typically will throw. And the one, this is the one time of the year where I almost exclusively throw some type of a creature bait. So let's go through a, a list of creature baits that I would use for pre-spawn and why. The first one is pretty basic. This is a, hold on a second, I got this all cool little thing set up for my, for my focusing. There we go. This is a Missile Baits D-Bomb. This is in black and blue or purple and blue. I don't know what it is. But anyway, it's a, but I'll use this. I'll use Green Pumpkin. I'll use anything like that, but a, a D-Bomb. And what I'm looking for with Creature Baits is I want one that has a lot of action or a lot of appendages, not really action. And I'm going to tell you why I like this one. Um, and the next one I'm going to show you at the same time. But uh, this, the D-Bomb, when you Texas rig it, okay, you put it on a, uh, you put it on a Texas rig, you put a weight in front of it and everything else, you're flipping it around cover, you're, you're uh, flipping it um, around bedding areas and things like that. You may not be able to see the bedding area itself, but if you look at these little ridges, look at those little ridges in there. These little ridges, after every cast, the water escapes these ridges and it fills with air and it traps air bubbles. And so what happens is you throw it down there, you let it sit for a few seconds and throw it like up against a log or into some bushes or anything you see along the bank. You let it sit there for four or five seconds. And these bass, although the water temperature may be in the 50s, maybe almost in the 60s, but not quite, these bass are still a little bit slow. They're going to come down, they're going to nose down on the bait, they're going to look at it. And if you shake it after about four or five seconds, if there's a bass looking at it, those bubbles are going to escape that uh, that bait and they're going to go up into that fish's face and it's going to they're going to cause him to bite um i do this with bedding fish as well but that's not what this video is about okay the next one is the oh, i never can remember the name of this one it's a missile baits too it's the uh destroyer is what it is and it's got a lot of appendages and this is what i i use a lot when the water's really really cold it's not so much that it has a lot of action like this tail twir twirls when it falls down. It's what it does when it's sitting still. It's sitting on the bottom. The bass has come down. They looked at it. And all those appendages are sitting there just moving along. That's that's exactly what I'm looking for. So this is an ab absolute great one. And it's got those same little ridges that the D-Bomb does that catches um, that catches the, uh, the air. So pretty dang cool. Green pumpkin, black and blue are usually the ones I have on there. Um, there's, got, I've got a video that I filmed a, a couple of years ago about how to choose the right color soft plastics for the water clarity. I'm going to leave that uh, that right up here in the description or right up here in the in the top corner. Just click on that little button and it'll show you that video. You video and you can go watch it after you're done watching this video. Okay, so the next one, I got my little list down here. That's why I keep looking down here. Uh, my next one is the Zoom Brush Hog or the Baby Brush Hog. Now. This is an old standard. I mean, it is a great, great little creature bait, and it's a lot like the Destroyer. Okay, it's got all it got long appendages and stuff like that. But for years, I've been fishing this thing. Throw it on a Texas rig, and I'm gonna show you some of the modifications I always do to it. Let me see if I can help get it to hold still a little bit. But um, you've got these little paddles right here. Okay, little flat paddles. I always take a pair of scissors. See, I've got my little child safety blunt nose scissors so I don't hurt myself um <laughs> but uh, I cut them I hold that paddle I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna show it to you and I cut each of those paddles in half okay let me see if I can get you to see it I, each of those paddles get cut in half I can do one side and then I do the other one and then if I, I typically 
what I used to do is I used to cut this right here. Now I cut the top of it and I let it hang. So when it goes through the water, that sticks out and has a little has a lot more action to it. And it just gives it one more appendage. And I have caught a ton of fish over the years on a brush hog and a baby brush hog. So excellent, excellent bait. The next one is a a zoom speed craw. And I, I've got this one. Um, I've got this one on the list. It's still got appendages. It looks like a little crawfish, but for one specific reason. And that's this thing right here. Okay. This is a greenfish tackle creeper. And I made a video probably four years ago about it, and I'll leave it up top, but uh, on how to fish it. But this thing was made for pre-spawn dragging is basically what it is. And what you do is you take that baby bro or that uh, that speed craw, you thread it on here, put it on that, on that little screw lock. Ouch, just poked myself with that sharp hook. That's great, Gene. Good job. Okay, and then you take and you just stick that hook right there, just like that. So this is what it looks like. Okay, fish it on a medium heavy rod. Fish it with 15 pound test fluorocarbon, and this is a dragging bait. You can shake it, 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 it lays up just like, let me see if I can get to show you. It, it lays up just a little bit, just like this. So it looks like a little craw maybe in the fighting position, but you can shake it a little bit while it's sitting still, and it'll make a little bit of action. But where that thing is really, really, uh, it really shines, is it shines at um, when the bass get up on flats when they're pre-spawning, or they get back in those transition areas and they're and they're just spread out on big flats going back into the spawning areas and you throw up on there and it's hard bottom and you just drag really really slow i have hammered fish for years and that the video i made was done after three years of begging greenfish tackle to let me do the video but they were winning so many tournaments tournaments on it locally that they didn't want me to do a video quite yet so when they told me i could i jumped on it but that's the greenfish creeper. Great little bait, great little pre-spawn deal. The next one is one that I left out on purpose of last week's, but that is the Old Faithful Lizard. Now this is a special color from Zoom, but a, a green pumpkin, black and blue. I just grabbed one that was bright colored. Um, but a Magnum Lizard or a regular lizard thrown on a Carolina rig, thrown on a Texas rig, drug through spawning areas. My favorite way to do do it is to put it on a, 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 a two-aught, uh, Gamagatsu extra wide gap hook um, and then pinch a split shot about 8 to 10 inches above it on the line and th and the split shots literally only about an eighth of an ounce maybe a quarter of an ounce and you got these these bedding areas that you can't sight fish because maybe the water's a little muddy or whatever you throw it out there and you swim it through the bedding areas really really slow and they hammer it but they'll do that in pre-spawn too when they're searching for beds or when they're in those cruising that cruising mood where they're up shallow just kind of cruising around throw it out in front of them slowly reel it past them and they can't stand it um i like this one there's another one that uh that rage tail makes called the rage lizard i think uh, that has a whole lot more action. Those are just harder to find. I always have, always can find Zoom, so I'm always using them. Uh, they work just fine. Uh, Zoom lizards are just, they're great. They're great. So what's the next one? Next one is paddle tail swim baits. Um, last year during the Gunnersville uh, tournament that I fished, the KBF uh, tour tournament in Gunnersville, the fish were moving in and out of the spawning areas, and I was fishing a staging area where they were moving into spawn, and they were coming out to, from spawn, and they were stopping there. And I threw a, a swim bait a lot. As soon as the wind would pick up, I'd pick up a swim bait, throw it, and, and just I caught a ton of fish on it. And I'm going to show you how I had it rigged or what I had it rigged with. So first of all, these are the two swim baits I throw. Um, a Rage Swimmer and a 13 Fishing Churro. Okay, let me get the... Get it focused on this one. So the churro is a, a lot different looking swim bait than what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing them like this, okay, where they got a lot of ridges. They're really, really soft, stuff like that. I'll talk about the churro in a second. But you take and you throw a jig head. And I use the, the squadron heads when I'm throwing fishing, you know, 8 to 10 feet deep. These are the half ounce or the three quarter ounce, I think. Let me look. Uh, three quarter ounce squadron heads. Heavy, heavy head, but I'm fishing, you know, 8 to, you know, seven eight nine ten feet deep and um and i wanted to get down there quick and I'm, I'm reeling it fairly quickly if i need a real if i need to fish really really slow i change up a little bit uh, quite a bit i'll change to like a medium action spinning rod 
or medium power spinning rod. I'll, I'll change to a medium uh, power bait caster and I will grab some very small jig heads. My autofocus is horrible. That's why I keep having to click this. But these are Gamagatsu round number 26 is quarter ounce. Quarter ounce is about the heaviest I throw. And these are, these are small jig heads. And I have two size swim baits that I use on it. I throw the uh, three and three quarter inch swim bait. And I throw the two and a quarter, two and three quarter inch swim bait. Raid Swimmer. And the Churro has a small one that I'll throw too. And I had those. Here they are. Right here. The smaller three, you know, two and three inch swim baits are the what I'm going to throw on this little jig head right here. And um, throw it out, let it hit the bottom, and slowly reel it back. We want it to have contact with the bottom. What you want is you want that thing to look like it's feeding on the bottom, and the bass will come down and annihilate it. Uh, that's two great options. Um, this is also a really good deal in a... Uh, in the bed on beds when they get up and they start to spawn or the males start to spawn now the churro swim bait okay let me go back to this now these ones with all the ridges these are awesome they're real soft plastic they're smaller they they uh they have a lot of action in the whole body of the swim bait okay this one right here has a totally different action and in the pre-spawn is when this thing really shines comparative to this one when it's fairly very cold in the low 50s high 40s this one actually swims let me point it towards you it swims like this it rocks back and forth and the tail flops back and forth it's like a lazy action is kind of what i call it and it's a really really cool deal we used to um i used to try to make flukes do the same thing i had a specific way i would rig a fluke to where it would swim like this and I would literally just cast it out and slowly reel it in without moving my rod tip. You do that with this swim bait and it's the action, that action is already in it. And it is amazing because it's got that lazy action and the bass are feeling a little bit lazy, especially when the water's cold. Throw that on a good size jig head and lay the hammer on them because that is a really, really good uh, swim bait. Now, um, last but definitely not least, when I'm talking about soft plastics, and yes, this is a plug for a good friend of mine who's been a friend for years, JJ's Magic, okay? Now, JJ's Magic is a soft plastic dipping dye and scent. This is actually a bottle of clear. It's so clear there's none in it because I used it all. But um, it comes in clear, comes in blue, comes in red, comes in methylate, which is a pink that's amazing to dip green pumpkin in because it turns the tails of your craws. Um, so if I take this baby brush hog, dip it in the methylate, it turns those, those claws and everything else, it turns them that same orange that crawfish get when they're in the, when they're, when they're in grass. But what I wanted to talk about is as, and cause I'll, I'll know I'll forget to talk about it when I start talking about the spawn, but as the fish start to spawn, any bait that you're throwing into a bed, if you get that blood red color, um, of JJ's magic and you dip just the head of whatever you're throwing even if it's a white bait, just the head into that red red dye before you put it on the hook. Uh, it's amazing what the bass do. It's one of the tricks that I've been doing for many, many years. I was the one that begged JJ to start making blood red because all he wanted to do for years was blue, methylate, chartreuse, and clear. And, I, and literally, it took a while. And he finally made a red, and it's one of his top sellers. Uh, especially in like Texas where they all love red anyway. Um, but definitely, definitely check out JJ's Magic. Uh, the videos that are perfect for this stuff, I'm going to leave the links right up here in, in the top corner. Uh, Texas Rig, The Creeper, and uh, and Choosing Colors are the ones I want you to watch next. But all the, the links to all these videos will be, or all these uh, baits and all these products will be down in the description. They're my Tackle Warehouse affiliate links. Anything you purchase while you're on Tackle Warehouse after clicking one of those links, um, I get a small portion of, and it really does help the channel. But uh, that's it. That's Tackle Tuesday. That's pre-spawn soft plastics. Go out and whack them, guys. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water. Go ahead and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.